Hi, I'm Ren, and welcome to part 3 of my Bellerophon Elise cosplay tutorial. Today we'll be making his upper body, including the gloves, gauntlets, chest, neck, and shoulder plates. By now you should be quite familiar with all of the techniques I'll be using, but in case you jumped right to this one, please go back and watch the previous two parts. We'll be starting with the gloves, which will be made out of the plain silver fabric. The first step is to lay your fabric down in two layers with the wrong sides facing out. Making sure the direction of stretch will go around your wrist, lay your hand down and trace around it like you're a child making an art project. Trace up your arm to the desired length with enough extra space to make sure it's not too tight. Pin your fabric layers together with a pin in each finger, one in the palm, one in the wrist, and one at the end of the glove so it can't shift. Without trimming any excess material, take it to your sewing machine and sew along your lines using a stretch stitch. Before cutting the excess, try it on to check the fit. If it's too tight, it's easier to seam rip it and start over now. It also ensures you don't waste any fabric. Once the fit is right, mark where your fingers should end and trim it all up. Do the same for the second glove. Once you're certain of the fit for your gloves and have trimmed them up, Turn them right side out and mark where your knuckles are on the back of your hand. This is where we will be adding some metal studs to mimic the joints on real metal armor. I usually use these small four point studs because you can easily apply them with your fingers by pressing them into the fabric and then folding down the points on the back. Once it's done, it'll look like this. Before moving on, I also cut the tops of the gloves into a pointed shape to mimic the under layer of bicep armor he has. This keeps me from having to sew more layers and also makes the armor cooler in hot weather. Since the gauntlets cover the majority of his forearm, there's no need to make bulky armor layers for such a small detail. The next step to mimic the armored look is to add a hand plate to the back of the glove. Doing this is really easy and helps it look like you're wearing more than just some silver costume gloves. Cut a couple rectangles out of your foam a little smaller than the back of your hand and cover them in your silver fabric. Then, invisible stitch them to the backs of your gloves while wearing them to ensure the correct placement. After that, it's on to the gauntlets. To make the main body of your gauntlets, you're going to need a few measurements. These will work for just about any gauntlet that only covers the back of your arm. So if you plan to do someone like yoga, you can use this too. Measure the length you'll need, the full width of your plate, and the width of your wrist. Transfer those measurements to foam and sketch out a rectangle to the full size you'll need, which would be the full length and the widest width. Fold that rectangle in half so you have a line of symmetry. Mark your smaller width measurement centered on one end of the rectangle and sketch half your shape. Fold and cut on your symmetry line and you'll have your full shape. Trace this piece to foam again and cut out your second gauntlet. After that, trace your foam on the silvery blue fabric and sew on your lines leaving the bottom open for turning and stuffing. Stuff it in and just leave it open for now. It'll get closed up when you make the wrist strap. Now it's time to add the details. First is the pointed part that sits just beneath the main body on the upper arm. Lay your completed piece down on some foam and trace the contours of the upper end. Use those as the bottom and create the pointed triangular top. Next, create an oval of foam that fits nicely in the center of the piece you just created. Once you have your foam pieces cut out, cover the triangular ones in your silver blue fabric and the ovals in the blue detail fabric. Then, invisible stitch the triangle piece to the main gauntlet and the blue detail on top. Finally, it's time to make the straps for your gauntlets. If you're not confident, you can make a strap that your hand will slide through that'll sit snugly against your arm. You can use snaps or other types of fasteners to make a closure, but the following method works best for me. For the bottom strap, measure around your full wrist and cut a wide strip to length. Fold it in half and sketch the V-shaped point that adorns the bottom of his gauntlet. And for the top strap, measure from one side of the gauntlet piece around your forearm to the other side and cut a straight strip to length. Cover your straps in the silvery blue fabric, adding an extra inch on either side for seam allowance and then invisible stitch them to your main gauntlet. 
Use your sewing machine to sew up the seam on the back of the bottom strap and check your fit. Once you like the way they sit, your gauntlets are done. Now that we're on to the chest portion of our project, we're going to need a little help. This isn't necessary, but it does make some of it a lot easier if you're working on your own. This is Duct Tape Wren. He's a duct tape mannequin I use for putting things in place like little details. While I may be showing myself measuring him in this video, it's purely for demonstration. Be aware that your measurements are likely always changing, so measure yourself for your pieces to get the best results. To create his front chest plate, we're going to need a plethora of measurements. You'll need to measure your shoulders, chest circumference, the full length, the shorter length, the circumference of your body where the bottom of the plate lands, and a neck curve. While you're at it, measure the full length of your back plate as well. To make the chest, I check my measurements against a piece of foam. Realizing it wouldn't be long enough the way I usually orient it, I folded it in half, long ways, and started sketching my shape. As I said in the last video, if you're not as small as me, you can always tape foam together to make larger pieces. In the end, the process is still the same. I marked out my full length on the fold, my shoulder width, the dip of the neckline, and the shape of the bottom point. Due to the unique shape of the back plate, armholes weren't necessary, but if you feel more comfortable marking them out, feel free. Then I cut it to shape leaving the neckline uncut so I can make more adjustments later when I make his neck piece. To make the back, I cut a large rectangle that was the desired height by the full width of my back. Then, I cut a long strip of foam to act as the pieces that go under his arms and around his sides from back to front. I cut the strip in half, then I taped the pieces to the outer edges of my main back plate foam so I can begin sketching the full shape. I measured and cut my long strips to the length required to go around my midsection and meet on either side of the front plate. After that, I cut the top edge to fit my shoulder measurements and curved the sides to make a smoother transition to the strips. Then, I pinned it to duct tape Wren to check how it looked. The next step is to cover the main front and back in fabric. The front with the silvery blue, and the back with the plain silver, leaving seam allowance at the end of the connecting strips just in case you need more length. Once they were covered, I pinned them back onto the mannequin and started the blue detail on the front of his chest. Since the detail doesn't have to fit around your body, this is where the mannequin comes in handy. I measured the chest plate using the body of the mannequin to check proportions for the detail, and cut a large trapezoid with the point aimed downwards, then covered it in my blue detail fabric. After that, I pinned it in place as well and moved on to the neck piece. I wanted to make his chest armor sort of like a halter top due to the shape it has on his body. So, I designed the front and back plates with this idea that the neck would be what joined them together. With that in mind, I measured the gap between the back and front across the shoulders of duct tape Wren and compared it to my own since I couldn't quite put the chest armor on myself yet. Using that measurement, I estimated the full circumference of the neck hole I wanted and marked that on some foam. I don't have any footage of this part because Con Crunch was in full effect, but essentially I made a super wide strip, similar to how I did his belt, and then sketched the shape of the front neck dip and the little slit that sits below his chin. In the end, it looked like this. After that, I covered the foam in my silvery blue fabric. The final piece before I could put it all together was the tiny blue diamond on the front of his neck. I checked the size against my neck piece, cut it out, and covered it in fabric. Once everything was pinned in place on my mannequin, I hid and stitched everything together. I sewed the side strips from the back onto the front chest so they met where the bottom dip begins. I sewed the front of the neck piece to the center of the chest, and then carefully pinned and sewed the neck to the back piece so it met in the middle, leaving a good gap where my shoulders were, like so. Now it's time to make sure we can actually wear this thing. So let's add a zipper. I lined a short zipper up with the back seam of the neck piece so I could be sure it was pretty well centered and pinned one side in place. Then I marked where the zipper would be and cut a slit down the rest of the back plate along my line, making sure it was just a hair shorter than the zipper's length. Before sewing the zipper in place, I trimmed a small sliver of the foam from my back plate out of each side so I could just sew through fabric. That way, if something were to catch or not work right, 
it wouldn't ruin the integrity of the armor. It also allows for just a bit more give when trying to jam your head through. Once the zipper was sewn in place, it was time to make his shoulder armor. To start the shoulder armor, I measure the gap from front to back on the completed chest plate, and then measure about how far I want them to hang over my shoulders. Using those measurements, I sketch a large half oval with a slightly pointed end, checking it against my mannequin for size and shape. Once I'm happy, I cut it out and duplicate it. Then we once again return to the detail stage. For the details, I traced one of my shoulder plates onto some foam and sketched a line down the center so I could make sure my shapes are symmetrical. Honestly, symmetry is a huge part of most armor designs, which can both be really helpful and really annoying at times. Looking at both my sketched ref page and some manga panels, I did my best to replicate the design on his armor paying attention to the spacing and size. I got really into trying to get it right and wound up blocking the camera for most of my process. But in the end, I got a shape like this. After cutting it out, folded over the center line, I traced and made a duplicate, and then it was time for fabric. Because it looks as though he has multiple blue jewels set into his shoulder plates, I covered the base piece in two colors of fabric, silvery blue for the underside and the detail blue for the top. Then I sewed the entire way around and marked a slit on the blue side that would be covered by the detail piece when it was sewn on. Then I cut that slit and turned it out, shoving the foam piece in through the hole. After that, I simply covered the detail pieces in the silvery blue the same way, making sure to cut a matching slit on the underside of them to shove the foam through. Pin your details to your main shoulder, and using the hidden stitch, carefully sew the upper detail to your main shoulder. Where the edges of each piece meet on the outside, be sure to sew in a way that covers the blue so that it truly looks like the blue is inlaid instead of sandwiched between them. Now all that's left is to sew your shoulders to your chest plate. I simply solidly secured them to the front and back, while using just a small tacking stitch on the neck to keep them from kind of flopping around, but sew them however securely you want. Now you're done! In the next video, I'll discuss how I made the horse head on the back of his armor, his wings, and possibly talk about what I think of the project's outcome. Things I liked, things I'd do better, comfort level, you know. If you want to see more of my cosplays, consider following my Instagram page at Kakashi Coffee Catcoon. And for hopefully more tutorials in the future, consider subscribing. See you next time.